have two words for you, Josh Salee. Now, when you hear that name, you might immediately think of his smash hit Big Kid Bars, but his latest single, Saratoga, holds back no punches. He joins me in the studio today to talk about his sophomore album, Probable Flaws, and what fans can expect to hear from him in the near future. Welcome to the show, Josh. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, Big Kid Bars was an immediate success. Like, mm -hmm. did you foresee that? Um, I actually wrote it when I was out in California, and I called my manager, and I was like, you, you need to hear this, you need to hear this. So I rapped it to him over the phone. And I think I performed it almost a year before it was ever recorded. Uh, oh. So there was already a little like buzz or hype behind it from the live shows. And I've always done it last because it's like live. It's, it's really high energy um, with the double time like raps and whatnot. So, I mean, we saw first saw some success. And then after the video, uh, the guy who shot it, his name is Connor Hayes. He did a really, really good job. Um, I, I mean, I knew there was going to be some success from it. Oh, wow. So Saratoga is obviously not on probable flaws. Was that kind of like a answer back to those who probably were like, you know what, mm, that was just a one hit. He's not going to do it again. Uh, it was it was it was definitely addressing some things because for the first time after probable flaws was like the first time I had like random opinions, you know, with social media online, you're pretty much accessible to anybody. Um, so there were people who like, you know, hit me up on Twitter or, or, or things like that, maybe who didn't like it as much as my first project or, or, or whatever their, their opinion was. It, wasn't, it was kind of addressing that and addressing that this was what I'm gonna do and that it's not really going anywhere. Um, and you can, you can kind of hear it in the record. It's more of a confident like record about telling like, you know, I have started a foundation and, and, and I do have a buzz going and now it's, it's mm -hmm. time that it's, it's, it's gonna be something that you're, you're gonna hear about or at least see. And speaking of seeing your um, debut album, Return to Cinder, mm -hmm. like that was a smash hit too. So when going into the studio recording Probable Flaws, you know, what part of Return to Cinder did you bring into the studio as far as like your fan base, your music? Like, what were you thinking when you got into the studio for Probable Flaws? It was a much different approach. Um, the last Return to Cinder was produced entirely by one producer. Um, so it, it kind of had a, a sound with it, a, a overall sound. And I was going through, it was a different stage in my life. It was a new transition, you know, freshly graduated, um, like personal girl issues, whatever you gotcha. want to call it. Um, so it was a different, it was, it was definitely, it was just a different spectrum of writing. Um, and this one I wanted to give something for people that, that, that would be more of a variety, but also more playful, like feel good music, but also, mm -hmm. you know, just, just give them more growth you know I think that the more than anything people want to see progression um, from somebody they're supporting and as long as I'm progressing in each new song as, as they're finding something new I think it's good so going into the studio is about finding something new trying different flows trying different things you know not really worried about if people will like it but knowing that this is progression and that they'll enjoy that now you definitely have progression like you have a fan base like and you're all over the place how do fans actually play a role in like how you approach music? Do they even play a role into it or do they just I think come to they, a concert? <laughs> I mean, I think they, ha they do play a role. I have um, a bunch of people nowadays who started out, they may have seen me at a show. Mm -hmm. um, one of my biggest fans now, a, a best friend, uh, saw me in front of like 10 people at a OU oh, wow. campus gig and it was I didn't even want to do it I didn't want to perform I had to perform for 45 <laughs> minutes and I was just like 45 minutes I'm, I'm rapping up here you know <laughs> and, it, and, it, and there's a girl sitting in the front row um, or front row front there's a huge field there's only 10 people there so, <laughs> oh, wow. so it's uh but she's sitting there and she loved it and you know and I don't think she's missed a show um, since and you know it's just it's just one of those things where they're the most important part is like you're only going to be able to continue to do it as a job um, if you have fans and if you have people who support it. And, I, and I'm, I'm fortunate to be from Oklahoma where it's a very supportive place. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of friends before I did it. You know, I was, I was just involved in a bunch of things and played, played sports, so I had friends all over. Um, and it's just kind of about connecting those friends and making, having something that they'll enjoy, you know? I mean, if I wasn't doing it well I don't know if it would have lasted long you know mm -hmm. but it's gotten to the point now where I have fans and I can go to Kansas and mm -hmm. it, you know just people are showing up to see me and that's or Arkansas. that in Conway. itself yeah that in itself is is 
is what I wanted to get to is where I was doing this as, as a, you know, a full-time gig and to where mm -hmm. I was traveling and really making friendships and connections all throughout, you know, so. Wow. It's just about continuing that. So you've been in the game, what, four years? Like, in, I mean, <laughs> when did you start this? I mean, you just came out of nowhere. I started this, let's see here. I mean, it was four years ago, but it was like, I just put some videos on YouTube um, just for fun. I wasn't that good then, you know. <laughs> At I just least you can admit there. that. I was, getting like, I was getting like 30 hits, you know. I'd be like, oh, man, this one has 100 hits. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> so I just did it for a little bit. And then one of my friends was like, why don't you try and make a song? And I was like, okay, you know, I'll try and make a song. And so I posted a couple random songs on MySpace. And, like, this is back when MySpace was, my, like, booming, you oh, know. Oh, wow. And, uh... Uh, somebody hit me up to Gorilla at Market for a, a, a concert for Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, wow. And, you know, I don't, I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I just got a <laughs> show out of this. I don't even have a song made. <laughs> and so I made some songs and I ended up, like, it was in Tulsa and that's, I just have all these friends there who were like, what, you're opening for Busy Bone? So I ended up selling a hundred tickets. Oh, wow. You know, and have, so there's a hundred kids there that wouldn't have been there. So a promoter kind of took notice of that and was mm -hmm. like, you know, well, let's put you on this one. Absolutely. And that's when it was just kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing, but this is fun <laughs> and all my friends are having a good time, you know? Oh, wow. And so I was just kind of feeling it out. And I would say about two years ago is when everything was like, you know what, this is, this is something mm -hmm. obviously I have support at. And then I met um, the guys from Paradigm, uh, who are a big music company here in the city. Uh, and once that link came, it was on from there. It's, it's really been just kind of popped. So.